All right, so San Diego has 70 miles of beautiful coastline, a collection of pristine communities, each with its own surf break. But in order to know the surf culture in San Diego, you have to understand the history behind it. And with it comes a great appreciation of the surfing industry and the people in the community who've helped made history right here in San Diego. Every surfboard tells a story, and every surfer has a special one to share. I, I'm out in the lineup, and I turn and I look, and I see my brother over on the right paddling out, and then I see my dad over at Larry's left, just over by the pump house, and then my two daughters on the other side. And I was like, wow, we all coordinated and are here at the same time. and. I just, I don't know, it was a really warm feeling just to have my whole family out in the, the lineup. At about eight, nine years old, he loved, one of his favorite things to do is to take off behind me, sneak up and blast right by me and try to, try to scare me. <laughs> and then of course he taught me how to find wax on the tide lines. For Debbie and Eric Gordon, it's more than just a story. It's the legacy of their father and the heart and soul of the family business, Gordon and Smith Surfboards, one of the most successful surfboard companies in the world. GNS was probably in the you know, top three, top five labels for three decades strong, surviving through a lot of eras. Gordon and Smith Surfboards started its humble beginnings back in 1959 in this tiny garage in Pacific Beach. Larry and Floyd had the idea of shaping foam longboard surfboards during an era where surfers were eager to ride something easier to maneuver. The foam blanks came out and the idea took off. Like a set of waves on a good surf day, Gordon and Smith were stoked. Their surfboards became a hit. GNS didn't have much competition with the foam board for about two or three years, which allowed my dad and my uncle to uh, actually get really much better at what they were doing. <laughs> I mean, it took me my whole lifetime to put all the dots together what my dad actually accomplished. Today, Gordon Smith Surfboards is owned and operated by the brother and sister duo. And while the two have put their own spin on the business, they both admit the company still very much runs under their father's core values. We worked under my dad for so long that we run it the same way. We, we fit people for a surfboard and even if you're a beginner or advanced, you know, we'd listen and, and you know, get the right model and, and the right fit for, for a person. Carrying out the same business model they did out in the water, they also did on land with skateboards. It was, it was uh, huge. Every magazine you would open, you would see GNS team riders in surf and skate. So uh, that was definitely the big crescendo. Today, Debbie has taken over the skateboard side of the business, who says has had its fair share of challenges in a male-dominated industry. But like her father, she's a visionary. I think I've made some headway and there's a lot of women out there that are doing the same thing as me. And there's more of us every day. And I'm really excited about that because I think it's needed and it's wanted and I think it's a good thing. We're getting to a good place. Debbie and Eric never thought in their wildest dreams that their father's innovative thinking and passion for surfing would evolve into 65 years of not only designing custom boards, but shaping the San Diego surf community forever. Tourmaline wasn't always a peaceful, positive place like it is today. Back in the 1960s, it was a relentless battle of the sand between homeowners and surfers, who at the time were labeled as a nuisance to the neighborhood. The ban of surfers from the beach came with controversy, and surfers would resist. Gordon was one of the founding fathers behind the Tourmaline Surf Park project. And in 1965, Tourmaline became America's first park designated for surfing. Larry Gordon passed away in January of 2016 from complications of Parkinson's disease. I'd like to uh, be able to surf until I die, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun right now. Like a true surfer, he surfed up until the end of his life. And just all the love that poured out of 
so many people here in San Diego was overwhelming. There's no way Eric and I can ever fill his shoes, but you know, to know that that's there is, is amazing. And, and uh, I, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else but trying to keep his uh, legacy going. In May of 2018, in honor of Larry Gordon's efforts to create Tourmaline Surf Park, a memorial bench was dedicated to him and his family. And it faced right in front of Larry's favorite spot to surf. I think he deserves a memorial bench. And, and I, I hope people look at it and wonder, who is that guy? And maybe they look a little deeper and find out his history because he really did have a lot of uh, impact in San Diego on a lot of people. His legacy has made waves in the surf industry for many generations. And just like the memories of Larry riding left out in Tourmaline, the impact he made in the surf community right here in San Diego is like the feeling surfers get when they catch a wave of a lifetime. Diane Tuazon, KUSI News. Now, Gordon Smith Surfboards will celebrate 65 years this coming year. The family has always been involved in community charity events here in San Diego. One in particular they've been a part of for years is Luau and Legends of Surfing Invitational, which takes place August 26th and 27th. It's a fundraiser with UC San Diego Health to raise money for cancer prevention and detection. It's surfing with a cure with the Aloha Spirit. For more information on this fundraising event, head to the website luaulegendsofsurfing.org. Great story, Diane. Uh, I, you guys know me. I love surfing, and I just, uh, you really have gained more respect and um, knowledge and appreciation of just living in San Diego alone, but also the surf uh, beaches and breaks that we surf as surfers. I mean, there's a lot of history to fight and keep Tourmaline Park the way it was, you know, mm -hmm. and I didn't know that till I talked to other surfers and they taught me the ways and taught me the history. So I wanted to share that history with those who are either new to San Diego or I've lived here long enough and just want to relive that memory of history. Yeah, and Life. if you have a GNS board, you know <laughs> yeah. the story behind it. The first foam longboard, who knew? Wow. Who knew? Really cool. Yeah, it's really nice to share their story. I love the shot coming up from the bench to you to the water. I thought <laughs> yeah. that was the money shot. Huge mm -hmm. thanks to photojournalist yeah. Sierra Simona. She just, she's so well, creative. She did a great job. Oh my yeah. goodness, 65 years of. You know, that's those are all family uh, photos footage. and vintage, yeah, footage that they sent us. And so I felt bad for Sierra sifting through 65 years worth and try to compile it into what we did there. So congrats to her. She did a lot of work in that. Into six minutes, pretty yeah. impressive stuff. Very cool. 